Saudi Islamic scholars debate death penalty for ex-Muslims on TV. Don't you love it when people casually debate whether you should be killed? Just casually. It's just a debate to have on TV, whether you should just be killed for not wanting to believe something. Well, let's get into it. On March 2nd, Saudi Arabian channel Rotama uh, Khalija, Khalija TV aired a show that sparked controversy across the Muslim world. Two Saudi religious scholars debated whether apostasy or abandoning one's religion should be punished by death according to Islam. Ahmed al Gan Gamdi uh, argued that people have the right to choose whether to adhere to Islam or not, and that there is no verse in the Quran that mandates the death penalty for apostasy. However, Abd al-Rahman Abd al-Karim claimed that apostasy is a grave sin and it deserves the death penalty as stated by Prophet Muhammad. This debate brings up the question of religious freedom and human rights in many Muslim countries, including Saudi Arabia, where apostasy is still a crime punishable by death. Now, I thought that this was really interesting for a couple of reasons. If you scroll down, we actually have the full video embedded, and we could watch that if we want. Of course, everything is subtitled, but... Um, what I find so interesting, or I, I could read out the statements um, so that we don't have to pause the video and all that stuff. It was significant to me that this is still happening because I think clips like this are important to show audiences because it's not like this is a conversation that was held 10 or 15 years ago. This is a conversation that was on Saudi TV at the beginning of this month, right? So for anyone who's like, oh, no, these aren't opinions that are widely held, da, da, da. That's just not true. <laughs> these are still things that are openly supported it on, openly supported on TV. And um, it's, it's still a point of contention. So don't let anyone tell you that like, oh, no, no, that was only like, you know, 15, 20 years ago that people were saying these things openly, da, da, da. No, that's not true. This is literally March 2nd. <laughs> Second of all, what I find very significant, Orman, is that the man who was arguing that there that people should be free to leave Islam is the former head of the Mecca chapter for the authority of the promotion of virtue and prevention of vice. So one of the people who is the head of in Mecca, the how do you say it right? A ribbon a ribbon a roof hasmakar, something like that. I don't know what you're referring to. No, the for for yeah. forbidding good and commanding. No, oh, I'm Rebbe Ma 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 Thank you. Um, so someone who was like in charge of that is the one who's arguing that they shouldn't, the people should be free to leave Islam and they shouldn't be forced to do so. He said, quote, people who do not adhere to the Islamic faith are free to do so. They must not be convert, co coerced. Um, and there he said there are unambiguous verses in the quran regarding their freedom to do so allah said there is no coercion in religion he cited the famous verse um 256 of the second surah of the quran there is an unambiguous verse and it applies to the infidel before his conversion to islam as well as people who converted and then became apostates they are free to do so as allah made it clear in this verse um and he also said that there isn't an explicit verse in the Quran saying that apostates should be killed as a punishment for his apostasy. And meanwhile, this um, other scholar who is part of the Saudi Fiqh Association um, just com completely disagrees with him. He's like, no, what are you talking about? This is 100% Hudud. Like, <laughs> um, this is clearly mentioned in the Quran. And... Um, there, there has been a consensus among Islamic jurisprudence and about the punishment for apostasy. And we have the Hadith, and he, he lists all the reasons, and I can give his full quotes in a second if you want. But what do you, what do you think about this? One, the, the scholars and their credentials of who's saying it, and the fact that they're having this conversation at all. What, what, what is your thought? Okay, so... Um, let's, let's make this very clear. The core, the Islam itself is very clear about this. Okay. If Islam is uh, the Quran and the Hadith, 
then it's very clear that the teachings of Islam tells you that somebody who leaves Islam, they're supposed to be uh, executed. It's very, very clear, right? Uh, the interesting thing is that one of these two guys was focusing only on the Quran and not on the Hadith, which seems to be very much in line with what Muhammad bin Salman is trying to do to reduce the influence of Hadith in Saudi Arabia and to just have a Quranist perspective. A Quranist perspe perspective means mostly focusing on the Quran and getting rid of the Hadiths, right? Um, that is a very challenging thing to do because that's how that's not what Islam is. Islam has been, there's been a consensus for the past, for ever since Islam was a thing, um, that Islam is both the Quran and the Hadith and the Sunnah, basically. There's, a, there's two wings that you can't fly without the Quran. Uh, Muhammad is a role model, his teachings and sayings, and the words of God as these are the two guys that you have to know how to live. So you can't just cut one of these out. Because if you do cut one of these out, then almost everything that we recognize about Islam goes away. Um, the Hadith, if, if you question the Hadith, then had Islam would be unrecognizable. In fact, most of the teachings of Islam, most of the commandments of Islam don't come from the Quran, they come from the Hadith. Without the Hadith, you wouldn't know how to pray, you wouldn't know how to fast, you wouldn't know how to do the Hajj, you wouldn't know how to do anything. So to question that is to question Islam uh, entirely. Um, so the guy that is focusing on the Quran, the thing is that the Quran actually doesn't have anything that is against executing ex-Muslims, right? So the guy, if it was referring to any verse, there is no such a verse that you could point to and say, like, this is uh, the execution of ex-Muslims against it. It's in the Quran. Maybe if somebody wants to say there's a the verse that says, La Akraha Fadeen, maybe he wants to refer to that one. But, but that one... Um, that one is not about Islamic laws. That's that that one is about somebody whether they convert to Islam or not convert to Islam. It shouldn't be by force. They have to choose. They have to choose, right? But it's not about not um, enforcing Islamic laws, as, which Islamic laws includes the Sharia, which you know by the Hadith. So once you become a Muslim, you are still allowed to leave Islam. Just know that if we find out you would be executed, right? So you could keep it private um, and not tell anybody, and then you could get away with it like that. Uh, but again, if the state finds out, then you're screwed. Um, so, so, but again, I see this whole debate as, and this has been the consensus, and the whole Islam is based on consensus, right? So this has been the consensus of scholars forever about what you're supposed to do with ex-Muslims. So for, for you to come and suggest that this is not part of Islam is dishonest because only after the pressure after the pressure that you're experiencing from the rest of the world because of your backwards you know moral standards all of a sudden you're realizing that for the past 1300 years uh, this was wrong and it was always not in islam it's completely ridiculous suggestion to suggest that this was not part of islam right i mean you could change islam he's suggesting that's but... not part of islam he's just saying that people that do not adhere to the Islamic faith are free to do so. Well, that's not Islamic. That's what I'm saying. That's not <laughs> Islamic. Islam, Islam teaches you that you're supposed to do that. Islam very yeah. clearly. This is Sahih Hadith. Again, this is this. I think is completely in line with the with the cutting off of Hadith of Muhammad bin Salman. To me, um, this could be I don't know an attempt to introduce because these discussions was not free to have these discussions before in saudi arabia on such a national stage right but i think like these debates are being had maybe to normalize as an alternative way of looking at it so given how much muhammad bin salman is coming out and against hadith that is not mutawatir even if the hadith is sahih and now seeing conversations like this being normalized to me, it seems like Quranism, which means that a, fo an, a Quran only focused version of Islam is something that is trying to be um, pushed into society from the top down to make to normalize seeing. Because if you could question the Hadith, most of Sharia will be questionable. And if Muhammad bin Salman can successfully find a way to question most of Sharia, then all all the Sharia-based Saudi laws will be um, 
would be able to you would be able to remove that but that would take an event but it, it's hard to do that because you're living in a country where where you have the world's some of the world's biggest scholars right so mm. medina itself for example is the sort medina and mecca are both the source of some of the most world recognized scholars who are completely who other people around the world look to for guidance and they are all um, against this this is insane for them this is completely like this is worse than kufr this is beda this is changing islam from within um and they are all against this and they can't um and they think like the great the, 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 this basically makes muhammad in their eyes muhammad bin salman is the worst enemy of islam right now because it's one thing for uh, people who are not Muslim to come against Islam. It's one thing from right wingers or ex Muslims or other people like, okay, these are the enemies of Islam, obviously, right? But it's another thing from somebody from within an Islamic country, from within the land of the Prophet to come out and spread these to the world. Like, there is no great in the but eyes nothing. of the Islamic scholars around the world. Yeah, this is this is this is a, a rotting from within. So, this is the greatest threat. This is this honestly and, i think the they might be right they, yeah they are um and the fact that the <laughs> muhammad bin salman is close with israel they think this whole thing is a zionist plot like th this is for them this is a huge red flag that the zionists have managed to infiltrate and come from within from the land of the prophet to be able to try to defeat islam from the inside out so this yo. for them is a huge red flag yeah hey yo yeah Damn. If that's true, we just all need to give in to the Zionists because they're too powerful. <laughs> <laughs> just give up. Just give up, guys. Just give up. There's no hope. Why would you even try? <laughs> oh, you know what? You know why you shouldn't give up hope? You know what? what? Because they because they deceive and they deceive, but Allah is the greatest of deceivers. There you go. At the end, when you think all hope is lost, they all deceive, but Allah is the greatest of all deceivers and he will come on top. Can I get a talk beer in the chat? No. <laughs> <laughs> talk beer! <laughs> oh my God. We're full Islamic. <laughs> Do you think it's a sign of progress that... Um, this conversation is even being had on Saudi TV. Um, yes, but I just and want you to be careful not to. I mean, this is. I, I want you guys to enjoy seeing this happening, right? I want you guys to be happy that this is happening, but I want you guys to stop short at congratulating Muhammad bin Salman, okay? It's okay for you to be enjoying this. It's okay for you to be celebrating this. It's okay for you to see this as potentially progress, okay? If it doesn't all come falling down. But again, do not, do not congratulate this monster for it, okay? Muhammad bin Salman is the greatest war, war criminal of our lifetime. So there's that. So just a warning. But also, D has a very interesting point. Is saying, I don't understand the confusion. The Quran is clear. It's a perfect book. Yeah. So if you guys so don't know what, yeah. So guys, if you guys don't understand what D is referring to, is that the Quran itself cl cl makes it very clear that it is a very clear book. So it says that it comes in clear Arabic and it's very simple and accessible to everybody, which should make conversations like this and confusions like this not happening so i don't know why it's happening what is there to be this confused is a very about clear... i don't understand what yeah. is it it's supposed to be very clear why are why are all these confusions yeah so um what is it you Ion highlighted gave this. Me a... you to... <laughs> no i want to highlight this ion gave me a Susanna akbar <laughs> Susanna... <laughs> that's good i like that oh and the evil eye the eye the eye oh this is this is this is um Islamic Islam is against this, by the way. You know that they consider the sorcery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. is definitely shirk. What do you guys call that shirk, in yeah. um, Persian? Um, I don't actually know. Because it has a lot of different names you... in different languages. I know it as malo ojo, malo ojo, but that's Spanish, obviously. Mm -hmm. 
And it's usually included okay. in the, the hand of Fatima. Yeah. It's interesting. Yeah. Well, well, that's different. That's different. That's different. Yeah, it is. Anyways. Did you know that Muhammad was cursed one time? With magic, and with sorcery? Who cursed him? The Jewish woman? Some power. The, no, no, him? there was. No, no, no. No, that was way before, like way before, some powerful sorcerer. And they went look for it, and they found that there was a comb at the bottom of a well, I think, that was causing the curse. Which is weird story. Oh, wow. Anyway. Vishwa, yeah. it's the Nazar. Thank you. Yes. I don't know. If, is that what you call it in Persian? I think this Nazar, is what the Kurdish right, people Nazar. call it. Yeah, but you just supposed to touch wood and we're fine. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you can now get the sexiest blasphemous art ever known to mankind for free. Too sexy to show most of it here on YouTube. We draw Muhammad, Hindu goddesses, sexy hijabi art, Jesus, Mother Mary, Japanese god, Greek gods, and much, much more. Click on the link below where it says get our free blasphemous art.